this starts out looking like some type of magic trick with balloons and playing cards it sort of is wizardry this green balloon is going to become a bronze sculpture and here's the process to make a bronze you need a ceramic shell and in the ceramic shell you need a wax copy balloon and to get a wax copy balloon you need a mold so this is the first step blowing up a balloon and partitioning it out in preparation to make a mold Playing cards are perfect for making flanges and partitions for rubber molds. They're a great size, easy to chop up, and they have a gloss finish which rubber will not stick to. Balloons are a pretty simple shape, so they get easy partition lines. A lot of this will make more sense as the progress continues on, but the main goal of the partitions or flanges are to section the balloon out into usable parts for a rubber mold, so that later on it can be deconstructed and usable to pour hot wax inside of and make a wax balloon copy out of. In this case, the simplest procedure was a three-part mold. Two main balloon halves and a small section around the balloon knot to isolate that area. This small isolated balloon knot will come into play later on in the process, but this is the best way to get a wax copy of it in the future. I'm making the flange by super gluing the playing cards to the balloon and using baking soda to cure the glue. This is a cool little trick, baking soda cures super glue instantly so you don't have to hold things in place forever. Then the card flange gets trimmed to tidy it up and make it uniform. I'm backfilling the inside of the balloon knot to artificially thicken it for the future. The balloon material is very thin, so this thickening will reflect in the wax copy and make a more useful, thicker wax balloon knot. After the balloon knot is thickened, the card flange is finished for the isolated balloon knot section, and then it's completely ready for the next step, silicone rubber coating. Here's what we'll be coating the balloon with, a viscous silicone rubber compound to coat the surface of the balloon, to later be able to make copies out of. It's a two part mix, the rubber and the red catalyst, then you mix the heck out of it. The first coat is the most important. This is where you capture all of your details. The first coat goes on thin so it can run into every tiny little nook and cranny. You want to avoid air pockets or bubbles and voids because those are flaws you'll have to fix down the line. Also you can make many copies from this singular mold so the better job you do now, the less work you have to do each time you decide to make a wax copy out of this mold. This varies from sculpture to sculpture but for this particular one I decided to coat the entirety of the balloon on the first coat. It was running everywhere, so it made it a little bit easier for this project to just get it all in the first try. The first coat runs and runs forever until it finally cures, then you're left with this super tiny thin layer. The silicone rubber compound takes hours and hours to fully cure, dragging this process on for days. You can add thickening agents and catalysts to speed up the process after you get your first layer on. I added a thickening agent which helps you build the mold thickness. This mold has to hold some rigidity and structure for its form for the wax copies later on. And then it's just mixing, brushing, waiting. Mixing, brushing, waiting until you get the desired thickness. I cut out a lot of the rubber brushing, but you kind of get the point. When you get to a healthy thickness, then it's time to make the mother mold. This mother mold is a super rigid shell that holds the general shape of the rubber mold. The rubber mold gets handled a lot in the next part of the process, which includes dumping hot wax into it. The mold needs to be sturdy and sealed to create the duplicate wax balloon shape. The easiest and most efficient way to make a mother mold is plaster of Paris and some sort of aggregate to strengthen the plaster. In this case, I use burlap strips and layer them over one another. The seam or partition lines for the rubber mold also double as seams for the mother mold. You make them individually and are able to come apart separately to remove the future wax copy. You build your mother molds in sections. Once one section is dry, you can be begin the next. 
The isolated balloon knot gets small plaster plugs. They're not entirely necessary, but while I'm doing everything else, I'll make them for that as well. You want to make sure you keep all of the sections clearly separated so they don't get fused or stuck together and so that later on you're able to take them apart as individual pieces. At this point the balloon that's been trapped inside has reached the end of its life so it's time to cut it out. The mother mold and silicone have all cured and it's time to deconstruct the mold and prep it for the next part of the process which is wax pour. Here you finally get to see the negative of the balloon and its smooth silicone surface. Here we're to the part of the process called pouring wax, which is literally pouring hot wax into the rubber mold. The mold making process was entirely for being able to make a wax copy or a duplicate of the original balloon. The special casting wax is melted to around 205 degrees. It's specialty made to pick up high detail so your duplicate wax copy is identical to the original that you start out with. It's pretty hot so you have to pour it in layers to get your desired thickness or in the case of the isolated blue knot, painted on in layers with a brush. The thickness of the wax will be the thickness of the empty void later on in which you pour bronze into that creates the final bronze castings. Typically there is an ideal thickness of 3 16 to 1 quarter inch for this particular process. These wax layers are added on top of each other until you get your desired thickness. In this case I'm shooting for around 3 16 of an inch thickness. Now it's time to demold and reveal your wax. There will be more reveals and surprises later on where you hope your work paid off and everything is as it should be. But here's a first glimpse into your final product of the sculpture. And it looks pretty balloony, so that's good. The second section of the mold containing the isolated balloon knot. It was pretty fragile, I kept breaking them. I had to make a few before I got a good copy. Um, this wasn't filmed, but here's the gist of it. This one I just set the broken piece on and it has a big air bubble in it, but it, it's, you get the idea. The three part mold leaves a seam line. You can actually just leave this and take care of it in the metal or to attack it right now. It really depends on the situation or your philosophy on building sculptures. I chose to smooth it out while in wax. I'm just using the back of a knife to scrape the seam and level it out to create the continuous surface of the balloon that you expect. This is just a rough pass to knock off the big flaws. I'll gradually go finer and smoother to polish it out. This is what the roughed wax looks like. Once the major stuff has been smoothed, I'll take a coarse scotch bright pad and add a little WD-40. The WD-40 is a solvent and degreaser. It'll soften or dissolve the top layer of the wax so you can further blend the seam line away. Then once the seam line is removed, the whole piece gets a spray of WD-40 and smoothed out. This gives it its final finish before the ceramic shell dip. Sometimes it's actually better if you leave scratch marks on the wax. This gives small crevices for the ceramic shell and slurry dips to latch on later in the process. The isolated blue knot gets the same treatment, roughing up the seam, WD-40 smoothing of the seam, and then a quick polish to finish the entire thing out. Because I isolated the balloon knot in its own separate piece, I have a little bit of work to do in the hole where the balloon knot section gets added back to in the future. I start by removing this excess pour spout flange piece to make room to fit the balloon knot section back into. I want to keep it pretty tidy so I carefully cut along the flange line. The better job I do now, the easier these pieces will go back together when they're in bronze. For the initial fit it's not quite right, from here it's sort of guess and check, cut a little test, cut some more, check again until I get the tight fit that I want. Finally I get the fit I want. I have it set in a little wonky so it looks weird, but it's very close and about ready to be sprued up. This is one of the strangest looking parts of the process, but it's also one of the most important. It's called sprueing and the bright red wax sticks are the sprues. This process comes with experience because it's entirely educated guessing. The bright red sprues will eventually be channels for bronze to flow into later on and direct metal to all of the places in the wax to form a solid bronze casting. 
The bright red sprues get fused to the wax balloon and a cup is added to the top of the main down sprue. This cup will eventually be the opening for the bronze to be poured into. Along with directing the metal later on, these also serve a second purpose which is channels for the wax to evacuate, hence the term lost wax casting. Smaller sprues are connected to the cup to direct the wax out and away later on during the burnout process. I skipped some of the footage of this process because it gets pretty repetitive. The, malay, the main balloon is sprued on a cup by itself and then the isolated balloon knot along with the window I cut out on its own sprue or gating system which it is also called. I don't have any footage of cutting the window out of the main balloon section but it helps later on in the process to keep the ceramic shell slurry dry doing the ceramic shell. Once we're finished up with all the wax work we'll start to build up the ceramic shell coating. Um, we start out with maybe one or two dips of this um, colloidal silica. And the colloidal silica is just a solution of uh, microscopic silica and a solvent which evaporates leaving the solids behind. And this is all in preparation for the next part of the process which is wax burnout. And that's creating an empty void for the metal. These silica layers form the detail of the surface and the structure vessel for the bronze. Here's a sped up portion showing the liquid evaporating and leaving behind the ceramic particles to make the first layer. So this balloon has a really smooth uniform surface so it got two coats of just the straight colloidal silica slurry instead of just one. This will help maintain a better, finer surface for the cast bronze in the end. So I skipped through some of the dipping steps because it gets pretty repetitive, but the philosophy stays the same. Build up the thickness of the outer shell while keeping as much detail as possible. After the first slurry coat, this is where you start to build up the thickness in increments of higher grit silica sand. The first step is fine mesh to keep the bronze's surface clean and detailed. This is relatively small scale casting. Some people have fancy aerated sand, be sand beds where you can submerge them to get easier sand layers. All of this is situational based on the sculpture, but you can do as many or few fine mesh coats as necessary. In this case, two should be should be plenty. For something that has ultra fine detail like clay sculpting marks or skin or fingerprints, you can take some extra time to do more fine coats to guarantee the surface of the sculpture, but should be plenty for a, a nice smooth balloon surface. And really the only area of this that is recognizable as anything other than a sphere is the balloon knot. Um, but this should be plenty to get to capture that part of the sculpture. This is the first major increase in the grit or mesh layers. This is the beginning of just being concerned with thickening up the outer shell layers. Um, this speeds up the process but will also fill medium size voids or spaces in the wax to prevent the bronze from making it into unwanted areas during the casting process. I skipped some of the monotony of the process, but you can start to see a major increase of the thickness. This is the coarse grit phase, which is the final step to create strength and structure in the shell for when you pour the bronze into the void and preventing it from exploding out or leaking or spraying molten metal everywhere. Again, I cut some steps out, but I continued dipping to my desired thickness. This is kind of an uncommon way to finish these, but now I'm going to cut an opening in the cup as a whole for the wax to melt out in the kiln and then later it becomes an opening for the molten bronze to enter. And by uncommon, I mean most people only dip up to the top edge of the cup so they don't have to cut an opening, but it's not a huge deal and is mostly preference, or in my case, it was just laziness. And here now you can see the exposed wax. These go upside down in the oven to melt out. I'm just trimming and balancing them so they don't fall over when they get set down. This is Jake, he's wearing thermal protective gear to put the waxes inside of the kiln. It's about 1200 degrees and he doesn't want to burn up. Uh, the kiln serves two purposes. One, it melts the wax out to create an open void in the shell, and two, it preheats the shells so the bronze doesn't cool immediately when you pour it in. This gives it a little bit more time to flow to every space in the void of the shell so you get your entire casting that you were hoping for. And this is the final step in this magic trick. 
This is the gas furnace which has been melting bronze ingots for a few hours. The temp is up around 1900 degrees to prepare the molten metal. It, it's quite the process to get this far and this is where you pray to the foundry gods that you did everything correctly. There really is no turning back and this is the last chance for a catastrophic failure. Exploding shell dumping all the liquid metal, small leaks or cracks, the metal being too cold and solidifying too soon before it fills the entire shell, you just don't quite ever really know. But coming up is a pretty good example of what can go wrong. I was filming the process of the balloon but we had a tiny little blowout on a shell. I had to drop the camera and throw sand at the shell to stop it from spraying out. A lot of times people pour into covered sand beds where the shells are completely covered in sand so they don't have to worry about this, but we pretty rarely have issues like this. This was not a common occurrence, but um, yeah, you just cover that with sand and it'll seal right up. All of that work was for this one moment, undressing the bronze of its ceramic casing and exposing the completed casting. This is going to be pretty exciting or a little bit disappointing if everything didn't go as you expected. In this case, everything came out about as good as I could have expected. You still have to be pretty careful not to hit the surfaces with the hammer and denting or damaging them. Bronze is pretty soft and fragile when it's in this state and you don't want to make more work for yourself in the future by messing up the surface. This one especially because it's, it's smooth and you don't want dents in there. You'll notice them right away. It's supposed to be a smooth, continuous surface. And there's the majority of the balloon. That concludes part one. There's still a ton of work left to do. Sandblast, remove the sprues, welding, polish and paint. I threw up a teaser for part two, so hopefully you check it out. Um, it's pretty cool. These projects take forever, so I don't upload very often. I continue to do them, so like and subscribe and check in maybe once or twice a year. Something new will be here probably, hopefully.